Hello and welcome, viewers, to Cybersecurity 102, Mastering the Digital Citadel with Era from Instalytics. Get ready for an immersive dive into the world of cybersecurity as I unfold advanced strategies for securing your digital fortress. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting, these videos promise valuable insights to enhance your cyber defenses. Join us in mastering the art of safeguarding the digital realm. An advanced look at network security principles, in-depth examination of firewalls, intrusion detection systems, and network segmentation. Network security is a multifaceted discipline that relies on a combination of technologies and strategies to protect digital assets and sensitive information from a myriad of threats. In this advanced exploration, we delve into the core components of network security, including firewalls, intrusion detection systems, IDS, and network segmentation, to gain a deeper understanding of how these elements work in concert to safeguard networks and data. Firewalls. Firewalls are the first line of defense in any network security strategy. They act as gatekeepers, controlling traffic flow between the internal network and the external world. In advanced network security, firewalls can be categorized into several types. Stateful firewalls. These firewalls inspect the state of active connections and make decisions based on the context of the traffic. Stateful firewalls are effective at identifying and blocking unauthorized access attempts. Application layer firewalls, also known as proxy firewalls, these operate at the application layer of the OSI model. They can scrutinize and filter traffic based on application-specific criteria, providing more granular control. Next generation firewalls, NGFW. NGFWs combine traditional firewall functionalities with intrusion prevention, deep packet inspection, and application-aware filtering. They are adept at identifying and blocking advanced threats and malware. Intrusion Detection Systems, IDS. Intrusion detection systems are designed to detect and alert on unauthorized or suspicious activities within a network. They come in two primary forms. Network-based IDS, NIDS. NIDS monitors network traffic and looks for patterns or signatures of known threats. It can identify unusual traffic patterns, unauthorized access, and suspicious behavior. Host-based IDS, CHIDs. HIDS, on the other hand, focuses on individual hosts or endpoints. It monitors system logs, configuration files, and critical files for any signs of compromise. Advanced IDS solutions incorporate machine learning and anomaly detection to identify previously unknown threats, as well as respond to incidents automatically through integration with other security tools. Network segmentation. Network segmentation is a crucial strategy that involves dividing a network into smaller, isolated segments. This limits lateral movement for potential attackers and minimizes the blast radius in case of a breach. Advanced network segmentation strategies include micro-segmentation. This involves dividing the network into exceedingly small segments, often at the application or workload level. Each segment has specific security policies, and communication between segments is carefully controlled. Software-defined networking, SDN, SDN allows for dynamic network segmentation based on real-time conditions. Policies can be adjusted on the fly to respond to security threats or changing network requirements. Zero Trust Network Access, ZTNA. ZTNA, a newer concept, assumes that trust should not be granted based on network location, and instead verification is required for all users and devices, even within the same network segment. In advanced network security, the effective deployment of firewalls intrusion detection systems, and network segmentation is a dynamic and evolving process. Continuous monitoring, threat intelligence integration, and regular updates to security policies are essential to adapt to the evolving threat landscape and ensure a robust defense against cyber threats. Thank you for tuning in to part one of Cybersecurity 102, Mastering the Digital Citadel, with me, Era from Instalytics. We appreciate your engagement and enthusiasm for enhancing your cybersecurity knowledge. Stay tuned for part two, where we'll delve even deeper into strategies and insights to fortify your digital defenses. Your journey to mastering the digital realm continues. Don't miss out. Delve deeper into advanced cryptographic concepts, public key infrastructure, digital signatures, and real-world applications. Cryptographic techniques form the cornerstone of modern digital security, ensuring data confidentiality, integrity, and authenticity. In this advanced exploration, we will delve into two fundamental cryptographic concepts, 
public key infrastructure, PKI, and digital signatures, and understand their real-world applications in ensuring the security of digital communications and transactions. Public Key Infrastructure, PKI. Public Key Infrastructure is a framework that manages the creation, distribution, and revocation of digital certificates. These certificates contain public keys, and they play a crucial role in secure communication and identity verification. PKI consists of the following key components. Certificate Authority, CA. The CA is a trusted entity that issues digital certificates to individuals, devices, or services. CAs are responsible for verifying the identity of certificate applicants and ensuring the authenticity of their public keys. Registration Authority, RA. RAs assist CAs in the registration process, including identity verification of certificate applicants. Public Key Repository. This is a secure database that stores public keys and associated certificates. It allows users to retrieve public keys for encryption and verification. Certificate Revocation Lists, CRL. CRLs contain information about revoked certificates, ensuring that expired or compromised certificates are no longer trusted. Certificate Policy, CP, and Certificate Practice Statement, CPS. These documents outline the policies and practices followed by the CA, including the criteria for certificate issuance and revocation. PKI is a critical component in securing digital communications, enabling secure email, web browsing, HTTPS, and authentication in various systems, including virtual private networks, VPNs, and secure socket layer, SSL, connections. Digital signatures. Digital signatures are cryptographic techniques that provide authenticity and integrity to digital documents, messages, and transactions. They are created using the private key of the sender and can be verified by anyone with access to the sender's public key. Digital signatures offer the following benefits. Authentication. Digital signatures confirm the identity of the sender, ensuring that the message or document has not been tampered with during transmission. Integrity. They ensure the data's integrity as any alteration to the signed content would invalidate the signature. Non-repudiation. Digital signatures prevent the sender from denying their involvement in the creation or transmission of the message or document. Real-world applications of digital signatures include email security. Digital signatures can be used to verify the authenticity of email senders, preventing email spoofing and phishing. Electronic contracts and agreements. Digital signatures are legally recognized for signing contracts and agreements, reducing the need for physical signatures. Secure transactions. In online banking and e-commerce, digital signatures help authenticate users and ensure the integrity of financial transactions. Software updates. Digital signatures are used to verify the authenticity of software updates, protecting users from downloading malicious or tampered files. In summary, PKI and digital signatures are advanced cryptographic concepts that play a pivotal role in securing digital communications and transactions. They form the backbone of modern cybersecurity by enabling trust, authenticity, and integrity in a wide range of applications, from secure web browsing to legal contracts and financial transactions. Thank you for joining us in part two of Cybersecurity 102, Mastering the Digital Citadel. We hope you found valuable insights into fortifying your digital defenses. Stay tuned for part three, where we delve even deeper into advanced strategies and tools to safeguard your digital assets. Until then, remember to stay vigilant and keep your cybersecurity knowledge sharp. See you in the next installment. Welcome to part three of our cybersecurity journey. Master secure coding techniques and identify common software vulnerabilities. I'm Era from Instalytics, and I'm thrilled to guide you through a thorough analysis of security flaws and share effective mitigation strategies. Together, we'll dive into the world of secure coding, equipping you with the knowledge to fortify your digital citadel. Let's unravel the intricacies of software vulnerabilities and discover how to tackle them head on. Are you ready to elevate your cybersecurity game? Let's embark on this learning adventure together. Master secure coding techniques and identify common software vulnerabilities. Thorough analysis of security flaws and effective mitigation strategies. Software security is of paramount importance in an era where digital applications and systems play a pivotal role in our daily lives. To fortify software against a myriad of threats, Mastering secure coding techniques and understanding common software vulnerabilities is imperative. In this comprehensive examination, we will delve into the most prevalent software vulnerabilities and explore effective mitigation strategies. Common software vulnerabilities. 
Injection Attacks, SQL. Injection, attackers manipulate SQL queries to gain unauthorized access to a database. Mitigation includes using parameterized queries and input validation. Cross-site scripting, XSS. Malicious scripts are injected into web pages viewed by other users. Prevention involves proper input validation and output encoding, broken authentication, weak passwords, encourage users to create strong passwords, and use multi-factor authentication for added security. Session management issues. Regularly rotate session tokens and use secure mechanisms for storing and transmitting authentication data. Insecure direct object references. Ensure proper access controls and implement indirect referencing, such as mapping to internal IDs rather than using user-supplied values. Security misconfigurations. Regularly audit and update configurations. Implement least privilege access to limit exposure. Sensitive data exposure. Encrypt sensitive data at rest and in transit. Secure key management and use strong encryption algorithms. Broken access control. Enforce proper access controls through role-based access management. Don't rely solely on client-side controls. Cross-site request forgery, CSRF. Use anti-CSRF tokens to validate and authenticate requests from trusted sources. Using components with known vulnerabilities, continuously monitor for updates and patches, and regularly assess and update third-party components. Mitigation strategies. Secure coding practices. Employ input validation and output encoding to prevent injection attacks. Implement effective error handling to minimize the exposure of sensitive information. Follow the principle of least privilege by providing users and processes with only the minimum level of access required. Automated scanning and testing. Utilize automated security scanning tools to identify vulnerabilities during the development process. Conduct regular penetration testing to identify and remediate security flaws. Secure authentication and authorization. Implement multi-factor authentication, MFA, to enhance user authentication. Use robust access control mechanisms to ensure that users can only access authorized resources. Secure Software Development Lifecycle, SDLC. Incorporate security into every phase of the SDLC, from design to deployment. Conduct code reviews and security assessments at various stages of development. Security training and awareness. Train developers and team members in secure coding practices and security awareness. Keep up to date with the latest security threats and mitigation strategies. By mastering secure coding techniques and understanding common software vulnerabilities, developers and organizations can create more robust and resilient software applications. This proactive approach to software security not only mitigates risks, but also builds trust with users and ensures the protection of sensitive data and digital assets. Thank you for watching this installment. We appreciate your engagement and commitment to enhancing your cybersecurity knowledge. Stay tuned for part four, where we'll continue our exploration into the ever-evolving landscape of digital security. Your journey to mastering cybersecurity is far from over, and we're excited to have you with us. Thanks again for your time, and we look forward to having you in the next session. A comprehensive exploration of ethical hacking and penetration testing methodologies. Development of a detailed penetration testing plan. Ethical hacking and penetration testing are critical practices in the realm of cybersecurity, allowing organizations to proactively identify and mitigate vulnerabilities before malicious actors can exploit them. In this comprehensive exploration, we will delve into the methodologies and steps involved in ethical hacking and penetration testing, culminating in the development of a detailed penetration testing plan. Ethical Hacking and Penetration Testing Methodologies Reconnaissance Information gathering is the initial phase where the penetration tester collects data about the target system or network. This may include network architecture, open ports, services, and potential vulnerabilities. Scanning. In this phase, the tester uses various scanning tools to discover vulnerabilities and misconfigurations in the target environment. Common tools include Nmap and Nessus. Enumeration. Enumerating the target involves seeking out specific information, such as user accounts, shares, and system details, to further assess the security posture. Vulnerability Analysis 
Vulnerability analysis focuses on identifying and categorizing the vulnerabilities found during scanning and enumeration. This phase may involve prioritizing vulnerabilities based on their severity. Exploitation. Exploitation is the phase where the tester attempts to exploit identified vulnerabilities. This is done with the explicit permission of the organization and can include activities like SQL injection, cross-site scripting, or brute force attacks. Post-exploitation. Once a penetration tester has successfully breached a system, they may engage in post-exploitation activities. This can involve escalating privileges, maintaining access, or exfiltrating data, simulating what a real attacker might do. Reporting. After testing, the penetration tester compiles a detailed report that outlines the vulnerabilities discovered, the methods used to exploit them, and recommendations for remediation. Development of a detailed penetration. Testing plan, creating a comprehensive penetration testing plan is crucial for a successful engagement. Here are the steps involved. Define objectives. Clearly define the goals and objectives of the penetration test. What systems, applications, or networks will be tested, and what are the desired outcomes. Scope and rules of engagement. Define the scope of the test, including the boundaries and limitations. Establish the rules of engagement, specifying what is allowed and what is not, and gain the necessary permissions. Team selection. Assemble a skilled and experienced penetration testing team. Team members should have expertise in various aspects of security, such as network, web applications, and social engineering. Information gathering. Collect all relevant information about the target environment, including IP addresses, domain names, network diagrams, and application details. Testing methodology. Choose the appropriate testing methodologies, tools, and techniques that align with the objectives and the target environment. Execution and reporting. Conduct the penetration test according to the plan, documenting all activities and results. Ensure that any sensitive data accessed is handled responsibly. Analysis and recommendations. Analyze the findings and vulnerabilities and provide detailed recommendations for remediation. Reporting and documentation. Create a comprehensive report that includes an executive summary, technical findings, risk assessments, and a prioritized action plan for remediation. Review and remediation. After presenting the findings, collaborate with the organization to address and remediate the identified vulnerabilities. Post-testing assessment. Conduct a post-testing assessment to ensure that the remediation efforts have been effective. Continuous improvement. Penetration testing is an iterative process. Use the insights gained from each engagement to refine security practices and policies. In conclusion, ethical hacking and penetration testing are vital components of a proactive cybersecurity strategy. A well-planned and executed penetration testing plan not only helps identify and address vulnerabilities, but also strengthens an organization's security posture in the long term. By following established methodologies and best practices, ethical hackers and organizations can collectively work towards a more secure digital environment. Developing Comprehensive Incident Response Strategies for Handling Cybersecurity Incidents In today's digital landscape, where the threat of cyber attacks looms large, having a well-defined and comprehensive incident response strategy is paramount. A robust incident response plan is essential for identifying, mitigating, and recovering from cybersecurity incidents. In this discussion, we will delve into the key components and steps involved in developing effective incident responses strategies. 1. Preparation and planning. Establish an incident response team. Create a team with clearly defined roles and responsibilities, including incident commander, technical experts, communication liaisons, and legal advisors. Develop policies and procedures. Document incident response policies and procedures, including the classification of incidents, escalation paths, and incident categorization, incident classification, 
define a clear system for classifying incidents based on severity, impact, and urgency, identification of critical assets, identify and prioritize critical assets and data to ensure their protection during an incident. Two, detection and reporting, implement monitoring systems, deploy intrusion, detection systems, log management, and real-time security monitoring to detect suspicious activities, establish reporting procedures, develop clear guidelines for reporting incidents, ensuring that all employees know how to report potential security issues. Automated alerts, implement automated alerts and triggers that notify the incident response team of potential threats in real time. Three, response. Incident triage. Upon detection, the incident response team must quickly assess the situation, validate the incident, and determine its severity. Containment. Isolate affected systems or networks to prevent further damage and propagation of the incident. Eradication. Identify and eliminate the root cause of the incident to prevent it from recurring. Recovery. Restore affected systems and services to normal operation. 4. Communication. Internal communication. Maintain open and transparent communication within the organization, ensuring that all employees are aware of the incident and its impact. External communication. Determine when and how to communicate with external stakeholders, such as customers, partners, regulatory authorities, and the public. Media handling. Designate a spokesperson for media inquiries and prepare press releases or statements as necessary. 6. Post-incident review, analysis and documentation. Conduct a thorough post-incident analysis to identify the root causes, lessons learned, and areas for improvement. Update policies and procedures. Based on the post-incident review, update incident response policies and procedures to enhance the organization's readiness for future incidents. Training and awareness. Implement training and awareness programs to ensure that the incident response team and all employees are knowledgeable and prepared. 7. Continuous improvement. Incident response is an ongoing process. Continuously improve the incident response plan based on evolving threats and changing technology. Regularly test and simulate incident response procedures through tabletop exercises and red teaming. Stay updated on emerging threats and incorporate new techniques and tools into your response strategy. A comprehensive incident response strategy is a critical component of an organization's cybersecurity posture. It not only minimizes the impact of incidents, but also builds resilience, safeguards reputation, and ensures compliance with regulatory requirements. By meticulously preparing for, detecting, responding to, and learning from cybersecurity incidents, organizations can effectively mitigate risks and protect their digital assets and data. Gaining a Deep Understanding of Threat Intelligence and Its Applications In the ever-evolving landscape of cybersecurity, understanding and effectively utilizing threat intelligence is a pivotal element of a proactive defense strategy. Threat intelligence encompasses a broad spectrum of knowledge related to emerging and existing cyber threats, and when applied judiciously, it can help organizations bolster their security posture, identify vulnerabilities, and respond to threats in a timely and informed manner. In this discussion, we will delve into the concept of threat intelligence and its applications in the realm of cybersecurity. Understanding Threat Intelligence Types of threat intelligence, strategic threat intelligence, this provides a high-level overview of global threat landscapes, emerging trends, and potential long-term risks. It is essential for decision-makers to set security priorities and allocate resources effectively. Tactical threat intelligence. Tactical intelligence offers specific and actionable data about threats, such as indicators of compromise, IOCs, malware signatures, and attack techniques. It guides security operations and incident response. Operational threat intelligence. This type is focused on the day-to-day -day activities of cybersecurity professionals, assisting in the monitoring, detection, and mitigation of threats. 
Sources of Threat Intelligence, Open Source Intelligence, OSINT, information collected from publicly available sources such as news, social media, blogs, and forums. Closed. Source Intelligence, data obtained from private or proprietary sources, often shared among trusted industry peers and organizations. Technical Intelligence, TechShint. Insights derived from technical analysis, including malware analysis, network traffic patterns, and vulnerability research. Human Intelligence, Human T. Intelligence gathered through human sources, such as informants or threat analysts. Applications of Threat Intelligence, Early Threat Detection. Threat intelligence enables organizations to detect and respond to emerging threats before they escalate, reducing the impact of potential incidents. Incident Response Tactical intelligence is invaluable during incident response, helping security teams identify the nature of the attack, IOCs, and potential attack vectors. Vulnerability Management Strategic intelligence helps organizations prioritize vulnerabilities based on real-world threats, allowing them to patch or mitigate the most critical issues first. Security Awareness and Training Threat intelligence informs employees about evolving threats and attack techniques, enhancing their awareness, and contributing to a more security-conscious workplace. Threat hunting. Organizations can proactively search for signs of compromise or suspicious activities within their networks using threat intelligence as a guide. Supply chain security. Threat intelligence helps organizations assess the security of their supply chain partners and identify potential risks associated with third-party services and products. Regulatory compliance. Many regulatory frameworks require organizations to demonstrate due diligence in protecting sensitive data. Threat intelligence plays a critical role in this process. Challenges and considerations. Data overload. The sheer volume of threat intelligence data can be overwhelming. Organizations must effectively filter and analyze the information relevant to their specific risks. Accuracy and timeliness. Timely and accurate intelligence is crucial. Outdated or inaccurate data can lead to false positives or missed threats. Information sharing. Encouraging information sharing and collaboration with other organizations, as well as within industry-specific information sharing and analysis centers, ISACs, can improve threat intelligence quality and coverage, privacy and legal concerns. When gathering threat intelligence, organizations must be mindful of legal and privacy considerations to avoid ethical and legal issues. In conclusion, gaining a deep understanding of threat intelligence and its applications is an essential part of modern cybersecurity practices. By leveraging several types of threat intelligence and applying them effectively, organizations can fortify their defenses, stay ahead of evolving threats, and proactively protect their digital assets and data. Tackling security challenges within cloud environments and developing a secure cloud migration strategy. As organizations increasingly move their IT infrastructure to cloud environments like AWS, Amazon Web Services, Azure, and Google Cloud, addressing security challenges becomes a paramount concern. Securing cloud deployments is essential to protect sensitive data and maintain business continuity. In this discussion, we will explore the security challenges within cloud environments and outline a secure cloud migration strategy for real-world applications. Security challenges within cloud environments, data protection, data encryption, ensure data is encrypted both in transit and at rest to safeguard it from interception and unauthorized access. Data classification. Implement data, classification policies to identify and protect sensitive information appropriately. Identity and access management. Identity governance. Employ robust identity and access management, IAM, policies to control and monitor who has access to cloud resources. Multi-factor authentication, MFA. Enforce MFA to enhance authentication security and reduce the risk of unauthorized access. Network security, network segmentation, segregate networks to limit lateral movement in the event of a security breach. 
Firewall rules. Implement proper firewall rules and security groups to control inbound and outbound traffic. Vulnerability management. Regular scanning. Perform regular vulnerability scans to identify and address security weaknesses in cloud assets. Patch management. Keep cloud resources up to date with the latest security patches and updates. Compliance and governance. Regulatory. Compliance, ensure cloud deployments adhere to industry-specific and regional compliance requirements. Security auditing, enable cloud service provider auditing tools and third-party solutions for monitoring and compliance reporting. Developing a secure cloud migration strategy, assessment and planning, inventory, assets. Identify all assets to be migrated to the cloud, categorize them by importance, and assess their security requirements. Data classification. Classify data and determine how it should be handled in the cloud, including encryption and access controls. Risk assessment. Perform a risk assessment to understand the potential threats and vulnerabilities in the cloud environment. Selecting the right cloud service provider. Evaluate cloud service providers, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, based on their security features, compliance certifications, and data protection capabilities. Choose a provider that aligns with your organization's security and compliance requirements, security design and configuration, security groups and policies. Define security groups and policies to control traffic and restrict access to necessary resources. Network architecture. Design a secure network architecture, including virtual private clouds, VPCs, or virtual networks, VNets, to segment and protect resources. Identity and Access Management, IAM. Implement IAM policies and roles that grant the least privilege access to users and resources. Enforce MFA for all users and administrators. Encryption and key management. Enable encryption for data in transit using TLS SSL and for data at rest using encryption services provided by the cloud provider. Manage encryption keys securely, either with cloud provider tools or third-party solutions. Incident response and monitoring. Implement real-time monitoring and alerting for security events within the cloud environment. Develop an incident response plan specific to cloud incidents and test it regularly. Training and awareness. Provide cloud security training to staff and foster a security-aware culture within the organization. Encourage all employees to follow best practices for cloud security. Testing and validation. Conduct thorough testing of the cloud environment to ensure security measures are effective. Validate that the migration process does not introduce new vulnerabilities. Compliance and audit readiness. Continuously monitor and assess the cloud environment to ensure compliance with relevant regulations and standards. Prepare for audits by keeping detailed records and documentation of security measures. Continuous improvement. Regularly review and update the secure cloud migration strategy to adapt to evolving threats and technologies. Embrace automation and orchestration for security and compliance tasks. By addressing these security challenges within cloud environments and following a secure cloud migration strategy, organizations can enjoy the benefits of cloud computing while ensuring the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of their data and applications. This comprehensive approach to cloud security helps organizations mitigate risks and build a robust defense against the evolving threat landscape. Diving into the legal and ethical aspects of cybersecurity. In the rapidly evolving field of cybersecurity, understanding the legal and ethical dimensions is crucial. Legal frameworks and ethical guidelines play a pivotal role in shaping how organizations and individuals approach cybersecurity, ensuring the protection of digital assets, safeguarding privacy, and maintaining trust in the digital realm. In this discussion, we will explore the legal and ethical aspects of cybersecurity and how professionals can actively contribute to discussions and examinations in this field. Legal Aspects of Cybersecurity Cybersecurity, Laws and Regulations, Data Protection Laws, Regulations, 
such as the General Data Protection Regulation GDPR in the European Union and the California Consumer Privacy Act CCPA in the United States govern how organizations collect, store, and process personal data. Cybersecurity standards, legal frameworks like the NIST Cybersecurity Framework and ISO IEC 27001 set guidelines for organizations to establish effective cybersecurity practices. Incident reporting. Many jurisdictions require organizations to report data breaches and security incidents promptly. International agreements. Treaties and agreements among countries address cybercrime and cooperation in investigations. Legal responsibilities. Due diligence. Organizations are legally obligated to exercise due diligence in protecting the data and privacy of their customers and clients. Liability. Cybersecurity incidents can result in legal liabilities, which include fines, penalties, and potential legal actions by affected parties, digital forensics, and evidence. The legal process often relies on digital forensics to investigate and prosecute cyber crimes. Professionals in this field help gather evidence and maintain the chain of custody. Ethical aspects of cybersecurity. Ethical hacking. Ethical hackers or white hat hackers use their skills to identify and patch vulnerabilities in systems, often working to protect organizations from cyber threats. Respect for privacy. Ethical cybersecurity professionals prioritize user privacy and consent, ensuring that data is handled responsibly and with respect to individual rights. Transparency and honesty. Ethical cybersecurity practices demand transparency in disclosing security incidents to affected parties and honest communication with stakeholders. Continuous learning and development, cybersecurity professionals have an ethical obligation to keep their skills and knowledge up to date to effectively protect against evolving threats. Contributing to discussions and examinations, engage with the community actively participate in forums, industry associations, and online communities related to cybersecurity and legal and ethical aspects, share knowledge, experiences, and best practices with peers and colleagues, stay informed, regularly follow updates in cybersecurity laws and regulations to ensure compliance, stay informed about ethical considerations and emerging best practices in the field, Advocacy and Education, Advocate for Ethical and Responsible Cybersecurity Practices Within Your Organization and Industry, Contribute to Educational Initiatives Aimed at Raising Awareness About the Legal and Ethical Dimensions of Cybersecurity, Contribute to Policy Development. If you have expertise in cybersecurity, consider participating in the development of legal and policy frameworks that govern the field. Offer insights and recommendations to policymakers to ensure that cybersecurity regulations are effective and practical. In conclusion, the legal and ethical aspects of cybersecurity are inseparable from its technical and operational dimensions. Cybersecurity professionals must have a deep understanding of the legal and ethical principles that underpin their work, and they have a crucial role in shaping the development of legal frameworks and ethical practices in the field. Exploring the intricacies of securing IoT, Internet of Things, devices and networks, designing a comprehensive IoT security strategy. The Internet of Things, IoT, has revolutionized the way we interact with the physical world, from smart homes and connected vehicles to industrial automation and healthcare. However, the proliferation of IoT devices has introduced new security challenges, making it essential to design and implement a comprehensive IoT security strategy. In this discussion, we will delve into the complexities of securing IoT devices and networks and outline a robust security strategy. Intricacies of securing IoT devices and networks diverse ecosystem. IoT comprises a wide array of devices, each with its own operating system, communication protocol, and security features. Securing such a diverse ecosystem is challenging. Resource constraints. Many IoT devices have limited computational power and memory, making it difficult to implement complex security mechanisms. Network heterogeneity. 
IoT devices connect to several types of networks, including Wi-Fi, cellular, and low-power wide area networks, LPBWANs, each with its own security considerations. Data privacy, IoT devices often collect and transmit sensitive data, ensuring data privacy and compliance with regulations like GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation, is crucial. Physical vulnerabilities, Many IoT devices are physically accessible, making them susceptible to tampering and theft. Designing a comprehensive IoT security strategy, device authentication and authorization, implement strong authentication mechanisms, such as certificates and biometrics, to ensure that only authorized devices can connect to the network. Enforce access controls and authorization policies to restrict device permissions. Data encryption. Encrypt data both in transit and at rest using strong encryption algorithms and key management practices. Implement end-to-end -end encryption to protect data from the device to the cloud. Security updates and patch management. Develop a process for regularly updating and patching IoT device firmware to address vulnerabilities. Secure boot and device attestation mechanisms can verify the authenticity of firmware updates. Secure communication. Use secure communication protocols, such as TLS, Transport Layer Security, for web traffic and MQTT with authentication for IoT-specific communications. Isolate IoT networks from critical infrastructure to reduce the attack surface. Device integrity and tamper detection. Employ hardware-based security features like Trusted Platform Modules, TPMs, to ensure the integrity of the device. Implement tamper detection mechanisms to alert when physical tampering is detected, monitoring and anomaly. Detection. Implement continuous monitoring of IoT device behavior and network traffic to detect anomalies and potential security breaches. Use machine learning and behavioral analysis for threat detection. Security awareness and training. Educate both users and developers about IoT security best practices, including password management and safe configuration. Promote a culture of security within the organization. Incident response plan. Develop an incident response plan specific to IoT security incidents, outlining roles, responsibilities, and communication procedures. Test and refine the plan through tabletop exercises and simulations. Compliance and regulations. Ensure that your IoT deployment complies with relevant data protection and privacy regulations, such as GDPR and CCPA, California Consumer Privacy Act. Stay informed about changing legal requirements. Third-party security assessment. Conduct security assessments of third-party components, including cloud services and IoT platforms, to ensure they meet security standards. Verify that vendors follow security best practices. Lifecycle management. Plan for the entire lifecycle of IoT devices, from procurement to decommissioning. Securely decommission devices and data when they are no longer in use. Security by design. Incorporate security into the design phase of IoT devices and networks, considering threat modeling and security requirements from the outset. Conduct security reviews throughout the development process. By designing and implementing a comprehensive IoT security strategy that addresses the intricacies of securing IoT devices and networks, Organizations can enjoy the benefits of IoT while mitigating security risks. A well-planned approach not only protects sensitive data and systems, but also builds trust with users and ensures the long-term security and viability of IoT deployments. Exploring advanced access control mechanisms and the latest authentication technologies. Developing advanced access control policies. Access control is a fundamental aspect of cybersecurity, ensuring that only authorized users can access resources and data. In today's rapidly evolving digital landscape, advanced access control mechanisms and authentication technologies are essential for safeguarding sensitive information and systems. 
In this discussion, we will explore the latest advancements in access control and authentication and outline how to develop advanced access control policies, advanced access control mechanisms, role-based access control, RBS, RBS assigns permissions to users based on their roles within an organization. It offers a more granular approach to access control, making it easier to manage and audit. Attribute-based Access control, ABAs. ABAs uses attributes such as user attributes, resource attributes, and environmental attributes to determine access. It provides fine-grained control based on dynamic and contextual attributes. Multi-factor authentication, MFA. MFA requires users to provide multiple forms of verification, such as a password, biometric data, or a smart card, before gaining access. It significantly enhances security. Single sign-on, SSO. SSO allows users to access multiple applications with a single set of credentials. It simplifies access for users and centralizes control for administrators. Time of day and location-based access control. This mechanism restricts access based on the time of day and the user's physical location. It is especially useful for remote working scenarios. Latest authentication technologies, biometric authentication, biometric methods like fingerprint recognition, facial recognition, and iris scanning provide strong and convenient authentication. They are increasingly integrated into mobile devices and access systems. Behavioral authentication, Behavioral biometrics analyzes the unique patterns of user behavior, such as typing rhythm, mouse movements, and touchscreen gestures, to confirm identity. Blockchain-based authentication. Blockchain technology is being used to create decentralized identity and authentication systems that give users control over their digital identities. Passwordless authentication. Passwordless authentication methods like mobile app-based authentication, push notifications, and hardware tokens, eliminate the need for traditional passwords. Zero Trust Architecture Zero Trust assumes that no user or device is inherently trusted, and access is verified continuously. It's based on strict access controls and continuous monitoring. Developing advanced access control policies define access control requirements. Clearly define what resources need to be protected, who should have access, and under what conditions access is granted. Access control models. Choose an access control model that best fits your organization's needs, such as RBAC, ABAC, or a combination of both. User authentication. Enforce strong authentication mechanisms like MFA and biometrics. Implement SSO where appropriate. Contextual access control. Implement context-aware access control by considering attributes like user location, time of day, and device health. Least Privilege Principle Apply the principle of least privilege to grant users only the permissions they need to perform their tasks. Audit and Monitoring Implement robust auditing and monitoring systems to track access and detect anomalies. Incident Response Develop an incident response plan that includes procedures for responding to unauthorized access and breaches. Training and awareness. Educate users and administrators on access control policies, strong password practices, and security awareness. Compliance and regulatory requirements. Ensure that access control policies align with industry-specific and regulatory compliance requirements. Regular review and updates. Continuously review and update access control policies as new technologies and threats emerge. In conclusion, advanced access control mechanisms and the latest authentication technologies are indispensable components of modern cybersecurity. By developing advanced access control policies that incorporate these mechanisms, organizations can establish strong defenses against unauthorized access, protect sensitive data, and maintain the integrity of their digital assets. Such policies not only enhance security, but also contribute to regulatory compliance and user confidence in the digital environment.